morning Willow. For your reading today, I'm going to read you the first chapter of our book, The Hodge Hegg. You all wrote some fantastic predictions about where you thought this hedgehog was going and why you looked so happy. So let's find out what's going to happen in the first chapter of our story. The Hodge Hegg by Dick King Smith. Chapter one. Your Aunt Best Betty has copped it, said Pa Hedgehog to Ma. Oh no, cried Ma, where? Just down the road, opposite the newsagents. Bad place to cross that. Everywhere's a bad place to cross nowadays, said Ma. The traffic's dreadful. Do you realise, Pa, that's the third this year, and all on my side of the family too. First there was Grandfather, then my second cousin once removed, and now poor old Betty. They were sitting in a flower bed at their home, the garden of number 5A, of a row of semi-detached houses in a suburban street. On the other side of the road was a park, very popular with local hedgehogs on account of the good hunting it offered, as well as worms and slugs and snails, which they could find in their own gardens. There were special attractions in the park. Mice lived under the bandstand, feasting on the crumbs dropped from listeners' sandwiches. Frogs dwelt in the lily pond, and in the ornamental gardens, grass snakes slithered through the shrubbery. All these creatures were regarded as great delicacies by the hedgehog, by the hedgehogs, and they could never resist the occasional night sport in the park. But to reach it, they had to cross the busy road. Oh, look, here's the park. There's the bandstand. There's the frogs in the lily pond. What else can you see? What other plants can you see? Where do you think the slugs and the snails might be? Where do you think the mice might be? Poor old Auntie Betty, said Ma again. It's a hard life. And that's flat. It's a hard death, said Pa sourly. And that's flat too. Talk about squash, the poor old girl was... Shh, said Ma at the sound of approaching footsteps, not in front of the children. As up trotted four small figures, exact miniatures of their parents, except their spines were still greyish rather than brown. So the spines are the spikes on their backs. Three of them were little sows, named by Ma, who was fond of flowers. So sows are the names for the little girl hedgehogs, and they were called Peony, Pansy and Petunia. And they're all um, flowers, aren't they? Pa had agreed reluctantly to those names, but had insisted upon his own choice for the fourth, a little boar. So a little boar is um, the name for the boy little hedgehogs and some of you told me yesterday that the names for uh, baby hedgehogs are actually hoglets which is very cute isn't it boys he said needed noble sounding names and the fourth youngster was therefore called victor maximilian st george well that's a long name max for short almost from the moment his eyes had opened while his prickles were still soft and rubbery Max had shown promise of being a bright boy, and now his eyes, his ears and his wits were all as sharp as his spines. Oh look, there's Max. I wonder if he's the hedgehog on the front cover. What are you talking about, Ma, he said. Nothing, said Ma hastily. You wouldn't be talking about nothing, said Max, or there wouldn't be any point in talking. Don't be cheeky, said Pa, and mind your own business. Well, I suppose it is their business really, Pa, isn't it? said Ma, or soon will be. They're bound to go exploring outside our garden before long, and we must warn them. You're right, said Pa. Now then, you kids, just you listen to me. And he proceeded to give the children a long lecture about the problems of road safety for hedgehogs. Max listened carefully. Then he said, Do humans cross the road? I suppose so, said Pa. But they don't get killed. Don't think so, said Pa. Never seen one lying in the road. 
which I would have if they did. Well then, said Max, how do they get across safely? You tell me, son, you tell me, said Pa. I will, said Max, I will. What do you think Max is going to go and find out? Okay, I'm going to leave it there today. Oh, look, we can see Max. Where do you think he's going to go? Okay, I'll read you chapter two tomorrow. Well done, everyone.